In our VISC 116 class, we have a group of exercises that I would like you guys to do. We're going to start with doing these in pairs. So the first um, one will be exercises one and two, and then uh, exercise three and four will be paired up and so on. So all together, by the end of this, you will have a total of 10 exercises completed each of them being worth 15 points a piece. Uh, you know, I know there's some are more complex than others, but we're just gonna keep it simple and make them all 15 points. And so let's get started on this. So the first thing I have here is the one and two. So squares one and two. You guys will not have to put the labels on here, but you will need to put boxes. So let's start out with um, starting this project or exercise. This is an eight and a half by 11 inch document. So let's start with that. File, new document, or new artboard rather. Uh, this can be print or web. Um, I like print because it gives us a lot more colors uh, as far as um, you know that's concerned. And I'm gonna switch this from points on my units of measurement to inches. And this is eight and a half by 11, but it needs to be orientation of landscape. I don't need any um, margins or bleeds. And our color can be CMYK for now. So we'll click create and you should have an eight and a half by 11 inch artboard. Now I do want you guys to use layers appropriately. We are going to create a layer just for the squares. So let's go ahead and rename this layer squares. So this is our um, four position, you know, place to position our things. Um, we may use these squares uh, by copying and pasting them into other layers, but for now we'll create this layer and call it squares. Um, we will be using the grid on this later. We'll talk about that in a minute, but let's just get some squares going. We're gonna use the rounded rectangle tool to create some squares. Now I'm just going to simply click, but not drag, and we're gonna make two inch by two inch squares. And the corner radius of 0.1667, I think that will, should work as a default. Now, what I want us to do is I want us to have a one point stroke on this. This does not need to be filled with a color. So I'm filling this with none. And then I am going to duplicate these squares um, four times across, but I need a quarter of an inch between them. So here's how I do a quarter of an inch. I zoom in, I go ahead and get the regular rectangle tool. I click right on the edge of the path of the original square and I type in 0.25 by 0.25, that's a quarter of an inch and click okay. Now what I will do, zoom out and I will simply select this particular square and copy and paste it over to the other one by alt click dragging or if you're on a Mac option click and drag. So I'm floating my cursor over the path holding down my alt key or option key clicking and then holding down the shift key so it stays in line and getting it to intersect that quarter of an inch little square that I made. Now we should know that control or command D will do it again so command D twice or control D twice. And I do need a quarter inch between these. So I'm going to also take this little box, move it down, make sure it is aligned to the path. You wanna be accurate. I'm gonna select all of those boxes and hold down the Alt or Option key and the Shift key and pop them down in position. And I will do that one more time by hitting Control D. And I will delete the two boxes I don't need. So I don't need the bottom left nor the bottom right. I also don't need the quarter inch uh, box. Now I will group these before I center them to the artboard. So object group or control or command G. And then I'm going to use the align um, tool up up top, or you could always go to window and align and it will give you the align um, flyout. Now you do want this to align to the artboard. So we're going to center align them and we're also going to align them on the vertical. So the reason why you group these is so that you can indeed align them. If you do not group them, I will show you, and you try to align them center both ways, they just stack all on top of each other. So this is the reason why we group them prior to aligning them. So let's make sure those are still grouped. You can always ungroup them later. The other thing um, on the instructions is it says to put your name down here. So I'm going to put my name. Do not put my name, put your name. I'm going to center it, shift control C, and also uh, pop it into position, kind of centering it nice and neatly between these two boxes. You can see those smart guides are on, letting me know when I need to stop clicking and dragging. Now I'm going to save this, and I will save it as uh, 
my exercise, I'm going to, you want it to be your last name, Bill. So mine is Bill Bree. Yours would be a different last name. First initial. And then EX1 2, um, because this is going to be exercises one and two. Uh, Illustrator 2020 is fine. Hit OK. Just whatever version you have. So that's first thing. You will be using this file over and over again for exercises one through 10. So, you know, you'll just save it as a different name. Now I'm going to go to my layers panel and we're going to um, work on creating some layers. So I'm going to create a layer for each exercise. Might as well do that now. So I'm gonna hit the plus sign several times. And there are gonna be a total of um, 11 layers in this at least. So for now, I might go to the top layer since I'm gonna be working on it first and I'm gonna name it exercise one. And this will be a light bulb. So I'll just put bulb. Uh, you could just name it exercise one. Now I'm going to then name the next layer, exercise two, and so on and so on. So um, you wanna get these kind of organized in the beginning so you don't have to worry about it later. So we're gonna copy and paste uh, the name exercise and a space, let me get this in here. I don't need that number. So I'm gonna just highlight exercise in the space and I'm gonna rename each of the layers and put the number in there. So I have exercise uh, four, five, six, and so on. Okay, so you guys get the idea. You wanna do that on all those. Now I'm ready to work on exercise one. Before I do, I need to download this image from this exercise, okay? So you can simply click on the image. I'm gonna go to student view for just a moment. This may not be um, activated, so let me, let me get this activated real quick. Let's go ahead and make this live, even though I'm not quite ready for it. So um, if I'm in student view, I don't have the video uploaded yet because we're making it right now. I should be able to click on this image and right click and say, um, save image as, and I can save it to the correct assignment. So normally I would definitely keep things organized and have a folder for each of my classes. So here I have exercises one and two, I already have the file downloaded, um, but we'll just call it A just to show you. And so we're downloading it and popping it into that folder. Now back to Illustrator. What you wanna do is maybe create a separate layer or you could go into exercise one or two, either one, either one of those layers, but I like to create a separate layer and I'm gonna call this the template and we'll pop um, that in here. Well, that way we can turn that off and on. Now I'm gonna to go to file in place or shift control P, which is command P, and I'm gonna get that file and place it. I wanna see if there's any difference between this one and the other one. So I'm gonna pop it right here in the corner. You want it kind of perfectly in there because it is eight and a half by 11. And it looks like the quality is decent enough to work with. So we've got 300 pixels per inch, that's fine. Now I do take these template layers and pop them down towards the bottom. It does appear as if the um, rounded rectangles are a little bit different on, the temp on my template um, layer, but that's okay. I mean, if you wanna round your rectangles a little differently, that's fine, just don't make them too rounded. Looks like I used a different uh, radius. Now I usually would um, lock this layer so you don't end up uh, messing it up. And we're gonna kind of use this as a guide. Now, I also want you guys to use guides. So we're gonna go to view and we're going to show the grid. I'm sorry, I meant to say grid. Now this is a pretty noisy grid here. Um, this is a grid that's been subdivided into 32 uh, segments because I wanted to be really accurate on some stuff. So to get your grid segments to change, you would go under, if you're on a Mac, it's under the AI and you would see preferences, but I'm on a PC today. So it's gonna be under edit and preferences and it'll be under grids, guides and grid. And here you can see I've made my grid color pink. You can make it whatever color you need to. I just did it so it would be uh, easy to see on a demo. And there's a grid line every one inch which that doesn't, you know, I don't think I'm using one inch for anything, but I did have subdivisions. I'm sorry if that was in 32, but it's in 24. 
24. Now, if you want the grids to not show up in front of things, you can always put grids in the back. For now, I'm going to leave them in the front. You can always turn that on uh, grids and back later. Now let me see on my original one, I think it was 32. Let me double check. So, cause I don't wanna just assume anything. So I'm gonna go to edit and go to my um, preferences, go to guides and grid. And it was 32, I thought I was correct. It just seemed off. So let's go ahead and go to again, edit. Sorry about that, grids and guides and grid. Let's make that 32 and okay. Now it doesn't look like there's as many um, grid points, but if you were to zoom in, you'll see they're very, very fine. So when you zoom out, they tend to um, change the number because they don't wanna make this look too visually crazy. Now we're going to work on this light bulb and we do want to have snap to grid on. So that's under view snap to grid because we want to have this be accurate. Now I'm going to go to my first layer and start there. And we're going to use just some basic shapes. So we're gonna use the ellipse tool. I'm looking for about dead center on this light bulb, which looks to be about here and I'll pull down and let's start right about here. Hold the alt key and the shift key. And wow, I was pretty close. Um, that's as big as the circle is, but I do need to move it up one. So I'm just going to use the arrow key to move that up one time. So that's perfectly aligned to the actual piece below it. I'm also going to create um, a box down below. I might use a rounded rectangle for this. We're gonna draw from the center out. I'm gonna start here roughly, somewhere up inside the, the bulb circular part. And uh, I'll hold the Alt key and the Shift key, I'm sorry, just the Alt key and pull this out. Now I do have a problem in that this shape is not rounded properly at the bottom. So I'm gonna use my selection tool and I'm gonna find, let me turn off the grid for just a second. This would be a good thing to have the keyboard shortcut, control and quotation. But when you have a rounded rectangle like such, um, you'll wanna choose the, I guess in this case, the direct selection tool. And we wanna pull out the um, corner radius a bit. So it kind of matches what we've got down here at the bottom. Now I may move this up one just to make sure. Yeah, I may have to do some edits on this, but um, may make it a little bit wider, that kind of thing. So if I'm gonna scale this thing from the center out, I'm gonna hold down the shift and start in the alt and scale from the center out. Okay, so this is uh, kind of towards the grid, but kind of not. So we'll, we'll just work with that here in just a second. So this, these two pieces need to be merged together because these are going to um, combine as one. Before I do that though, I might do a little bit of editing on the circle and pull this line down, holding down the shift key. Let me make sure I get the right one here. Using the direct selection tool and hold down the shift key and pull that down just a little bit. Uh, we will do some editing on this once we merge it. Now we're gonna merge these two shapes, holding down the shift key. Make sure they are center aligned. I'm gonna hit control Z because I might have messed up that centering on this. So let's make sure that that is actually centered. You don't wanna screw that up. Excuse me again. Hold on the shift key while I'm doing that. There we go, it looked like I had something off. So make sure you're careful to make sure that things are aligned perfectly centered and you don't accidentally uh, pull it over to a grid line. This is why you zoom way in guys. If you're not zoomed way in, you will guaranteed, you'll be pulling this to the grid and it won't be on the proper segment. Okay, we're gonna merge these two together. So um, we can either use a pathfinder, which I particularly like, and we're just gonna use this Unite. Now we're gonna edit this um, piece to, um, to work a little bit better to what we need. So I'm gonna hold down the shift key, grab both of these, and then I'm just gonna use the arrow key. Whoops. <laughs> Let's get those to merge again. I'm not doing real well today with holding down the uh, anchor points. So we're gonna move this down a bit. And then we have to be really careful. We will turn the grid back on. So that's uh, control and quote or command and quote. And I'm gonna pull these up. 
But the thing about pulling these handles up is I need to make sure that whatever I'm doing on one side is the same on both sides. So I have to really pay attention to what I'm doing with regard to the grid. You know, this guy is not the same as that. So I'm going to make sure it's oops, on the same point. And I'm looking across here. It's um, they're aligned on the horizontal and the grid, and they're about two uh, two segments in. Now I do need to pull this out. I have to do some adjustments again. I'm going to pull this in one and up. Same thing over here. In one and up. And up here on this particular part of the bulb, I may have to pull this down a couple segments. So again, be very careful to be accurate. We'll go down three segments there and three segments here. There, it's more accurate. And I may have to pull this over. You know, this doesn't look like it's snapping to the grid very well. So I may have to turn off snap to grid and move that over and then we'll turn snap to grid back on. So sometimes things don't line perfectly. So I'm gonna go again to turn off snap to grid here. And um, I'm gonna click on one of the anchor points over here and zoom in a little bit, make sure only that anchor point is selected. I'm just gonna click the arrow key over one time on, and the same thing here, clicking on the anchor point and use the arrow key on my keyboard to click over one time. That looks pretty accurate. So this is the overall light bulb shape. Again, I'm gonna turn off my guides or my grid. And we can see, I'm gonna flip the fill and stroke. We can see that's a fairly accurate shape. So you want to go for accuracy. If you really screw it up, just start over. It's just a circle and a rounded rectangle. It's not that difficult, okay? So just start over if you really mess up. Now let's talk about the color for this. Um, this is actually, uh, a, I believe, gradient mesh. Um, I might copy and paste this shape just in case I need it later because when you mesh something, I don't believe it gives you a stroke. So I'm gonna go to my layers panel and I'm going to duplicate this shape and I'm gonna lock it into place or turn it off. Maybe turn it off and lock it. That way I don't move it. So it's turned off and locked. Now I'm going to create a mesh out of this object. So I'm gonna use my mesh tool and we're gonna click for a highlight. Let's make sure this is again selected. Oh, let's make sure we're on the right path. I believe perhaps I may have to fill that with a color before I can mesh it. So let's fill it with a color first and then let's use the mesh tool. There we go. You have to have it filled with something. I have um, a white point here more or less. And by the way, if you wanted to kind of see this a little bit better, you can always move the um, template layer over just a little bit. So if you're like, I can't see this, I'm gonna hold down the shift key and use my arrow key, one, two, three, four, five times. And I'll bring it back later, but this gives me an you know, a way to see what I'm working on. So um, again, I have a mesh point here. I'm gonna get the mesh tool again. Looks like we have maybe um, some mesh points down along the line. So I'm gonna put one here. You don't wanna to create too many um, mesh lines. So you'll notice I click right on the line that's already there and I'm gonna create a mesh right through here, mesh line that's vertical. Now it looks like we might have a few different mesh points to here. We got a yellow one and then a lighter color one and an orange one. The orange one may go in here. So I'm gonna pop that in right about here. And then we'll start coloring. So I'm gonna use my direct selection tool to start coloring this. So this one um, is going to be like a white mesh point. Uh, let's see here. It looks like I may have to add, let's try this. This is gonna be like an orange mesh point. Looks like it's working out fine. Looks like I need another mesh point down below. So I'm gonna grab my mesh tool, pop another mesh point in. Again, being careful not to create more rows. This one's gonna be um, maybe a white color. And that looks pretty good. Oh, and then I also see that on the edge, there's some sort of ambient light coming in here. So I'm gonna click on this point here and maybe make it white. Same thing with this. I'm not sure if it needs to be white or not. You know, close enough, but I'd say that one uh, probably wasn't so much white, uh, but we do have a light highlight there. We've got this going down to um, 
orange color. Um, I might add another white point in there. Let's see here, it does appear as if that one might be white. No, nope, not so much. Uh, so we'll just leave it at this. It looks pretty good. So we'll just leave it at that. Now, if we have to play around with the meshing on it to kind of get it to conform to the shape a little bit better, we can always move handles and um, mesh points and get those to work a little bit differently uh, if we need to. So I may have to make that feel a little bit more rounded. I might tighten this one up so I can get more white over there and you know just kind of play around with it just a little bit. So I do like to mess with my mesh points sometimes and get those handles to contour a little bit better to the image. Pull this down just a little bit. I want that yellow to kind of pull down. So I'm pulling this uh, mesh point down. I'm going to pull that handle down just a little bit. All right, so this mesh is done. So let's pop that into, well, it's already in position. <laughs> Now, that's the reason why I did go ahead and make a black outline on that was, or copy and paste the um, path, was because the mesh does not include a stroke. And I'm going to bring that path up to the top of the mesh. Eh, maybe not. Looks like it's a little thick, so I'll take it down below. Okay, the next thing we're going to work on is the um, little uh, part, that the electrode part, the electricity part. Now, again, I do have this original path that I am going to use. So I'm gonna duplicate that one more time. And again, I'm gonna lock one of them and I'll turn it off too. What I'm duplicate, what, the reason why I'm duplicating that path, and let's turn off this mesh for just a minute, is I'm going to chop this bottom section off because I want it to align perfectly. Um, so again, I'm going to use um, maybe my, uh, ellipse tool because that's basically a really long skinny ellipse. But I do, do need to find center and I will probably go ahead and bring my template layer back to where it goes. One, two, three, four, five. Holding down the shift key. This is a nice way, you know, if you can remember how many counts you, you, you used, it will pop it right back into the grid. Okay, so I'm going to lock that template layer and go back to the layer one. And we're going to create a, a rather oblong oval that kind of matches up with the curvature of the top of that metal piece on the light bulb. Now we will then chop out what we don't need and keep what we need. So this is why, again, I had duplicated that path is so I could use it to um, eliminate the parts that I don't need and keep the ones that I do. I'm going to go ahead and fill this with uh, just a, a gray color just for now. There we go. And we're going to subtract from this everything but the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and use this Shape Builder tool, hold down the Alt or Option key, click and drag over the parts I don't want. And there you go. Magic. It's done. Now, I may or may not keep the stroke on that. Well, we'll see. Let's see, it looks like that is filled with a gradient uh, from a white color gradient to a, a orange, to a yellow, to a red. So we'll go ahead and do that. Um, let's go ahead and just fill it with uh, white for now. And we're gonna bring up the gradient. Now to apply the gradient, I just simply click on the gradient slider and I will add the colors that I need. So this was a red, Make sure your gradient's pulled off of your dock over here because otherwise, if you have swatches up and gradient up, they don't like to cooperate with one another. So this was a red to orange to yellow to white gradient. Oops, let's move that slider. And it was something along the lines of this. Um, we'll, we'll see how close we are. And again, I may go into my layers panel, unlock my template, choose it. And by, when I say choose it, I can click on this little um, target and it'll choose it. That's what I mean by choose it. And I'm looking at this going, okay, looks like this gradient could use a little bit more of a red color in there. So I'm gonna bring up my swatches again and bring in another kind of reddish orange. There we go and pull my sliders 
maybe eliminate one of the colors. Just kind of, it's not orange enough. Let's replace it. There we go. Something along this line, but a little bit smoother. So we're smoothing this out as best we can without getting too, too much line of demarcation. I mean, there's, there's some nice stuff going on there. It's kind of smooth. So we're going to try to duplicate that smoothness. And that's, that's close enough. Close enough, right guys? Close enough for what we need. And I'm going to close my gradient or I can pop it back over here somewhere, maybe pop it right up underneath the swatches panel since I use these a lot. And that guy is ready to go. Now I do need to make these little screwy um, ridges here. So I'll go ahead and do that. Um, they just need to kind of match up to this metal piece here. Now, if I wanted to, I would um, go ahead and um, pop this in position, maybe turn this layer off so I can get that to work properly. So let's go ahead and do that. So my template layer is still unlocked. So I'm going to select the template layer by clicking on the target, hold down the shift key, one, two, three, four. Whoops, I, I guess I just did three. Pop it in position. I'm going to turn off the path and lock my template. Turning off the path that's underneath that, or that, that would be underneath the ridges. I'm going to go back to my first layer. And we're going to get this um, guy to uh, function. Now, I may need this path turned on just so I know where the edges are, because it may be slightly off from the original. So I'll get to that here in just a second. But in the meantime, I'm going to be drawing an oval shape and I'll be cutting out of that oval another portion of an oval. Um, so let's uh, get that prepared. I'm going to get my ellipse tool. Again, the best thing to do is draw from the center out. And it looks like that oval is about like so. I'm gonna turn off that path so you can kind of see what I mean by it. it's about like so. So I just move that up. So it's about that wide. Uh, the stroke on that is much smaller than uh, what is here. So let's put this at probably a half a point stroke or even smaller. So this is probably a 0.25. It's pretty small. There we go. Now I'm gonna make sure that it lines up more or less to the edges of the one that's here. It more or less does. Let's see, is snap to turn back on? Let's not. So let's make sure that that's turn on, maybe, <laughs> not sure yet. And I'm going to use my free transform tool to scale it. So I'm gonna hold down the shift key and the alt key. So it'll scale it from the center out. There we go, that's a little bit better. Now this shape um, will be rotated uh, a little bit, but before I do that, um, I would have a tendency to copy that shape and pop it in position on, on top of the other one. And then we'll subtract one shape from the other. Now I'm not sure with the gradient if it will allow, let's try it and find out. So this again must be the shape builder tool holding down the alt key and selecting both of those items. Sure, it does let us do that, so perfect. Now this gradient is different than the other gradient. So I'm gonna bring in the gradient slider. This one is just a yellow to red gradient. So I'm gonna pop out the white and the orange and change the gradient to be a lot more like the original. Now this does have a rotation. Um, I'm not sure what the degree of rotation is, so I'll just double click on here and I'm gonna put a three in there and see if that's it. Nope, maybe a five. Five looks about right. So I'm gonna hit okay. And I'm gonna move this roughly down in position. Again, I probably wanna go ahead and turn on the original path. Um, here is also a thing I need to pay attention to is this path. Um, it looks like it also has a 0.5 on the um, stroke. So let me go to the stroke panel and let's put a, or a 0.25 rather. Let's get that 0.25 in there. There, that's nicer. And now we may have to turn, definitely we'll have to turn um, snap to off. So let's go to view, snap to grid, because we do want this to line up pretty well to the original piece. Now, you may have to click and drag 
And what we're looking for is we're looking for this point, anchor point, to kind of align to the edge of this line. You don't want sloppy work. So again, we're zoomed way in. And over here, this may have to be changed as far as its scale goes. So I'm gonna use the free transform tool and we're gonna just pull this in just a little bit. Oops, I don't want it to rotate, I wanna scale it. Let's see if I can, there we go. I want to pull that in so it comes in and aligns to that edge. If you have to turn off the template layer to see whether or not it's lining well, aligning well, then please do. So I'm looking at both edges. This one could come in just a little bit. And we're trying to get these to, trying to get that cent to center, that point to center aligned to the um, stroke. Okay, so we have that one. Once we have that one, let's turn on the template again. And we are going to copy and paste it and move it down. It may also need to resize just a little bit. So let's see if we can use transform each for that. So we're gonna to go to object, transform, and transform each. And we will uh, be moving this down. Oops, not horizontal, excuse me. Let's put that back at zero, <laughs> excuse me. So in the vertical, we're gonna go, uh, I know it seems counterintuitive, but we're gonna slide this until it moves roughly in the position we want it to move in. We also need to scale it just slightly because these are not matching up to the edge because this does taper. So on the scale, we're gonna use, um, let's see, which one do we use? I'm gonna just put an 80 in here just to see. Yes, it will be the horizontal scale, but it won't be 80. So let's do 99 and it's almost, perfectly aligned. So we'll try 98. You just do it till it is perfectly aligned. Yours may be a little different than mine. It is usually best to zoom in when you're doing this. So you can kind of see whether or not these are perfectly in the center. It might even be a 97.5 for all I know. So that looks like it's aligning about right. So I'm going to hit copy. Um, and hmm, before I do that, that just seems like an odd thing going on here. Hmm, I'm not real happy with the fact that it looks like it's also rotated slightly. So let's turn this off and let's see what's going on with this finished piece. See, that does not rotate. So when I scaled it, it did create a problem because when I squished it in, it looks like a different degree of rotation. So I'm gonna hit Control Z. We're gonna go back to Object, Transform, Transform Each. Now this may have a slight degree of rotation, 0.5, let's see what that does. Oops, minus 0.5. And I'm gonna copy it and see if that's better. Yeah, it's all right. Not the best, but it, it'll do. Now, I'll hit control D and see if it'll still keep lining up to um, the ones below it. And yeah, it's working out okay, but I think I'll, I'll, I'll try uh, a little something different. Um, turning off the template layer, I'm gonna pull this down just a bit using the arrow key. And I'm not real happy with what this is doing. So I may have to use a little bit different approach. So I'm gonna pop this in position. Maybe, uh, I'm not gonna resize it any. And then what I'll do is I think I'll just distribute these evenly uh, and that will help. So I'm gonna choose the last object and the first object and I will go to the align panel, window align. And we're going to go to distribute objects on their centers. Um, and instead of aligning to the artboard, we're gonna to align to, I think it's selection. Let's see what happens. Distribute evenly on their centers. Oh, I need to select all of them. <laughs> and distribute evenly on their centers. There we go, that looks better. Do these line up properly on the paths? You know, again, you wanna zoom in and make sure nothing's getting too funky here. Um, so I think these don't align perfectly. So what I'll do is I did get this guy to align perfectly. So I'll click on the top one, the middle two and the bottom. I think I'll also uh, align them on their centers. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, it, it, it did align on the centers, but again, I'm not real happy with what's going on. So I may have to manually do this. So I may just have to shift click or click and hold shift key and just get this to 
pop in there to, uh, just right. So yeah, or just resize it. Yeah, this is a, not a perfect science here, but we're close enough, you know? Sometimes it's just like, that's eh, close enough. I don't wanna fight it too much. Yeah, because that just feels a little off. So I don't like things that are off. So I'm a little OCD about stuff, guys. So bear with me. I'm going to take a minute and get these to uh, work out just a little bit better. I may have to just slightly resize each of these just ever so slightly just to get them so they're more or less looking a lot better aligned onto the um, body of that part that's threaded. There we go. And you may think I'm splitting hairs, but uh, I have worked enough on illustrations. They need to be technically sound and accurate uh, in the field where, um, you know, it just is, uh, it's really important. Okay, so we're gonna turn back on the mesh. We're gonna turn back on the path. And this looks pretty good. It looks like we still have some more work to do though, because I need to do a little knob at the bottom that um, it's the part where the, the electrode touches the uh, electrical part, so or where the bulb touches the electrical part. So again, I'm going to make sure that snap to grid is on. And I'm showing the grid. This should be drawn from the center out. Again, this is just simply an oval. So let me make sure I'm on the right path here. Uh, we're going to start probably right about here. And I'll hold on the Alt key and drag out. This will be filled with gray apparently. So let's go and fill this with a gray color. Not sure which gray, we'll just make it look good. I think it was a little bit darker. And it also had like this little um, highlight in there. So again, I'm going to turn off snap to grid because this little guy is just simply, looks almost like a teardrop shape. You could do this with the oval tool and alter the oval. Um, but it's something along this line. So it looks kind of like a little teardrop and it uh, is filled with white, I believe stroke with none. Stroke of none. So there's that. Now I have shift clicked and select shift clicked on both of these and selected them both because these two things, I could group them. These two things need to go to the bottom of the layer order um, on this piece. Now let's see what we have. Again, we're going to compare one thing to another. Uh, again, that's control or command quote to turn off the grids. Um, we're going to see, let's deselect, zoom in. This may have to move down just ever so slightly. I may have to turn off snap to grid, which it is. So if I want to, I can go ahead and grab this, move it down one point um, or to a certain point and should align, this part should align with um, the edge of the piece here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna move it up just a smidge. Of course, hold down the shift key so things work out. There we go. And if I feel like this is not quite the way I want it, I can always click on, um, let me snap to the grid. I can always click on this anchor point and move it up. Same thing here, move it up one. And that might feel a little bit more like it's going up. Okay, so let's see what else we have to do on this. I'm gonna turn off the um, layer. looks close enough. <laughs> it's slightly off, but it's okay. Close enough. And it looks like we're, we're good with the bulb. I now need to put a big gray stroke around this. So let's take the whole shape and let's merge it. So I need to take all the parts and pieces on this thing and I need to copy them and merge them. So um, I need to take the ridges, the meshed object, and the path for, I need to take everything, um, the path for the base and the little part at the bottom. I need to, I'm gonna go ahead and group those, okay? And I'll duplicate this group by clicking and dragging it to the plus sign. 
And the one below, I'm gonna select all the items by clicking on the target. And we're gonna merge them. First off though, I'm going to go ahead and fill them with a default fill stroke. The stroke of none. Okay, it's wanting to fuss with me a little bit. Um, and then um, let's turn off, we'll see what we got here. So this is all of the, the parts and pieces. And you can use the Pathfinder panel again. Let's see, there's Pathfinder, and we're gonna merge those. Looks like we're having a bit of a problem. Uh, the problem that we're running into is this gradient mesh or the meshing. So you remember I copied this shape a few times over, we're gonna copy it again. So we are having a problem with the merging. So I'm gonna take this path and we're gonna copy it again, unlock it. We're gonna um, probably delete that mesh because it's not working to our advantage. So let's delete that. And we'll choose the path that had already merged with the this path that is the overall shape of the bulb por portion. Again, I like to fill those with uh, all the same color. Go into Pathfinder and let's try to merge that. You see how that worked much better? It's because uh, we didn't have the meshed object. So that's a little lesson learned. You cannot necessarily use a meshed object to merge or unite other paths with it because it doesn't just, it just doesn't work out. Now we're gonna go to the stroke panel on this and we're gonna increase the stroke quite a bit. Um, probably set it on the outside. And that stroke is a gray color. So let's go ahead and make that a gray of some sort. Again, going to the layers panel, I am going to turn on my original uh, objects. I have this path that is gray, but then I'm missing my black path. So let's move that path up. There we go, that works out better. Only problem, none, no problem. Good, everything looks good. Now, finally, we have the background of this graphic that has um, some blending to it, um, kind of a gradient of sorts. Now, what we're gonna do is uh, I typically, when I have this kind of situation, I will go into my squares and grab that square. Now, these may be grouped up, so I'm gonna have to grab the first square, figure out which one is the first square. That's probably the 10th square, so let's go to the first square. There we go. Now I'm going to copy that. I'm going to relock that layer, and I'm going to go back to my bulb layer, and I'm going to paste it in place. Oops, I guess it uh, wanted to put it in its own, so I'll just drag it up here after it, after it pasted it. So it copied and pasted it into the squares layer. So that layer that is still there, okay, plus I have it up here in this layer. So let's lock that squares layer. It wouldn't let me copy and paste to a different layer. So I'll copy and paste the same layer and then move it. All right, now um, this rectangle should go in the back and uh, it's a gradient mesh or not a gradient mesh, could be, but it's a, a gradient fill. And uh, right now I have the stroke selected, oops. So uh, let's flip that. So we have the fill. Uh, as a gradient. I believe I might have something uh, not selected. Nothing's happening. So nothing is selected. So let's make sure it's selected. It's a select then effect environment. So we have to select first. Again, we have this selected. We are going to make a gradient. It remembers what gradient you used last time. Um, we don't necessarily want that gradient. We're gonna do a freeform gradient here. So I'm gonna click on the freeform gradient icon. And then again, sometimes I will move the um, template layer over just a little bit so I can see what I've got. And it looks like we have on this gradient, I may have to go back to my gradient here and then edit the gradient. So um, let's see where that is. There we go. Click on that to edit it. And we are going to add, it's nice to have your gradient moved out when you're doing this with swatches. Otherwise you can't see gradient and swatches at the same time. So um, with my, uh, whoops, edit gradient again, sorry. With um, my edit gradient, I'm gonna make the exteriors of this uh, kind of a yellowish color. 
add another one. It looks like they're all kind of yellow on the exterior. Yeah, we'll do all yellow there. Then for the interior, I'm gonna pop in a brown, maybe a really nice deep dark brown. And um, yeah, I may have to put a few more browns in there. And that may have actually been a gradient mesh because the gradient mesh does act completely different than um, the, gra the, the freeform gradient. So, you know, I'm trying the freeform gradient, not real happy with what I'm seeing. So, you know, let's hit control Z several times. And again, I'm sorry guys, you know, this is just how things work sometimes. It's like, you don't know what you know until, you know, you just have no idea. So um, we're going to make sure that this is now um, instead of a freeform gradient. And again, my apologies. Sometimes I think it's one thing and it's another. We're gonna make this a gradient mesh. So I'm gonna pop them, whoops. <laughs> Let's lock this object. <laughs> Let's lock everything in this layer, except for the rectangle. Now I can pop a gradient mesh in here. So this particular one, I'll put it roughly center. That particular item is gonna be brown. And then what I can do is I can use my uh, lasso tool and I can select all the other anchor points and go all the way around and lasso everything but the center one. And I'm going to fill that with yellow. Oops, I grabbed it a different square. That's okay. We'll just fill this with none. That should be in a locked layer anyway, right? Um, so here we are. I've got this. Uh, and it looks like I could probably have a little bit more meshing going on. Um, let's bring up the mesh tool. Oops, excuse me. Uh, let's see what we have going on here with this mesh. We may have to pull it out. This is uh, gonna take a little bit of doing. Bring this in. We don't want it super, we don't want a super tight line of demarcation. So we're gonna pull this back a little bit. And it looks like I could be mixing a color too, because this brown is pretty crummy. This brown needs to have more red in it. So you can always um, mix your own color. Oops. I may have to, gosh, I'm clicking on the wrong thing every time. There we go, let's try this, there we go. So I mean, yeah, I definitely don't care for that brown color. It's not giving me what I need. So I may have to make a new brown. I think I'll duplicate the brown that's here, duplicate that, then double click on it, that really dark brown, and add a lot more magenta to it. Let's hit okay. There we go, that's better. May even add a little bit more yellow to it. Much better. Not perfect, but much better. Let's take out a little bit of this, this uh, cyan and a little bit of the black too. Yeah, we're almost there. Not quite removed that much. All right, so it's now very similar. Now, if I want to, I can add more mesh points instead of clicking and dragging all these mesh points. Um, so I'm gonna get the mesh tool and I'm gonna put a little bit more brown towards the edges. And it remembers what color I just recently used, hopefully. Um, and we'll see if we can then play with these mesh points and get them to cooperate a little bit. Um, the blending is really not easy on this. Let's try that. Let's just add one down here. I just hit Control Z a few times. There we go. That's getting to be a little bit better. Now, I don't necessarily need this to be perfect, a perfect duplication of the um, gradient. I just want you to attempt to use some gradient meshing. Um, it is not, it, it, is, it is not easy necessarily. It can be kind of challenging, as you can see. But I do want you to attempt to edit the gradient mesh, add a gradient mesh, um, you know, play around with it. And, you know, just, this is not a, a horribly difficult gradient mesh, um, but, you know, that just depends on who you are and what kind of experience you've had with, with meshing. I guess it really comes down to that, doesn't it? Okay, so that's not perfect, but it's close enough. Um, well, I'm not really happy with it, but, uh, I would spend more time on this, quite frankly, um, just to try to get it to feel a little bit more um, smoothly gradiated. So this does take time, guys, to do this. So 
you know, but I'm going to move on. So we're getting there, almost there. Got to get this figured out a little bit better. I might add, even add a couple more mesh points with a different color of brown, uh, maybe another um, lighter, slightly lighter brown. So if I go and add that brown, it's too dark. I might duplicate that brown and double click on it and maybe reduce some of the things a little bit, you know, about 10% or so and um, kind of play around with a couple of different mesh points. Can you can hold the shift key down and click on multiple mesh points too, oops. Shift click with the direct selection pool and add that little bit lighter color. Um, so it may take a little bit of practice on this one. I'm having a, if I'm struggling, I know then it might be that you might struggle as well. So it's just, uh, it can be a bit of a struggle. It's okay, we're, we're in it together. <laughs> I want that to smooth out. And I may have to come down in here and just add a different um, gradient point down there as well. So I may have, I may have to use a little bit more gradient um, uh, than what I intended. So I'm gonna duplicate this again double click on it. And this one's going to have a lot more yellow and a lot less of everything else. So this is, uh, yeah, proving to be quite the challenge. But we're always up for a challenge, I guess, when it comes to this kind of stuff. There we go. Now this is going to get a little bit better. So I've got some yellow in here. So we'll, we'll just seem like it was going to be simple, but it's not as simple as I'd hoped. Not as simple as I had hoped. Kind of fooled me. All right, so you guys get the idea, hopefully. This is not looking as best, the best as uh, best as I hope it to be, uh, as best as I'd hoped it to be, but you get the idea. Okay, now uh, I definitely need to get this guy back in position. So I'm gonna hold down a shift key. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. And we're ready to, I think almost ready to move on to the next thing. The only thing we're missing here though is a nice solid black stroke. Um, with this being a gradient mesh, again, the strokes don't show up. So the last thing I'll need to do on this once I get it all pulled together is I'll have to again go find that square. Uh, here it is, it's accidentally filled with a color. So let's fill that with none, stroke it with black. Get the black stroke in there. Sure why I can't get that black stroke, that's odd. And we'll bring that um, to, we'll, we'll copy it, we'll duplicate it, and we'll bring it to the um, top layer one. Definitely fill, fill it with uh, none. So let's see what we have here. Looks like we're having a problem with the fill on it. I may have to, I may have to copy an, another one because right now the fill is none and the stroke is black and it's showing it as white. So we, we may have an issue here. If that's the case, what I will oftentimes do is um, I'll just um, delete that. I'm looking at this going, what is going on? Okay, so we have a mesh. Something's something's happened here. Let me hit Control Z for just a second. I had, think I had that mesh thing selected. Let's lock that. And let's go back down here. That's the problem. I had the mesh selected. So huh. wrong thing selected, didn't realize it. All right, so back in here, might happen to you too. Duplicate this, bring it up to the first layer. And there we go, that works out much better. So now I have the um, light bulb more or less finished. Again, I'm gonna turn it off, take a look at the original. Yep, looks pretty much the same, minus the gradient. I gotta work on that. You guys take the time to work on your gradient. Um, and now I'm ready to work on the next exercise, exercise two. So I think I'll stop this video and pick up a new one. And um, that way you can kind of work on one and have a rest and come back to the other one.